The time now is 5.50 p.m. on Wednesday, November 18th, 2020, and the public hearing is officially open. Welcome to the public hearing for the Interstate 75 Interchange at Northwest 49th Street Project Development and Environment Study in Marion County, Florida. Financial Project ID number 4352091. My name is Mary McGeehy. I am the Senior Project Manager and in the FDOT District 5 Planning and Environmental Management Office. In addition to Amy Windham, the District 5 Project Manager for the Florida Department of Transportation, and Carlos Rodriguez, the Project Consultant Team Project Manager, who are on site to coordinate in the public comment period portion of this meeting. As we get started, I'd like to thank all elected and appointed officials for attending the public hearing, either virtually or in person tonight. At this time, I will turn the presentation over to Gabrielle Garcia. Thank you, Mary. The purpose of this public hearing is to present information to the general public about the proposed improvement, its conceptual design, all alternatives under study and the potential beneficial and adverse social, economic, and environmental impacts upon the community. You are also invited to view the project displays here tonight as well as on our project website. For those of you attending virtually, the displays can be downloaded using the control panel. The public hearing also serves as an official forum providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their thoughts and ask questions about the project. This public hearing is being recorded and the hearing video link will also be posted at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 435209-1. The department encourages the public to participate in the public hearing by submitting comments and questions. There are multiple ways to do this. First, both in-person and virtual attendees will have the opportunity to make a verbal statement following the end of this presentation. Virtual attendees can type comments or request to speak in the questions pane. In-person attendees can provide verbal comments either at the microphone by filling out and submitting a speaker request card or directly to the court reporter. Everyone can submit comments or questions after the hearing by using the mail, email, or telephone information shown on the slide. This information is also available on the project website. Written responses to comments and questions will be provided after the end of the formal comment period for this hearing. For those of you who have dialed in without computer access, you are in listen-only mode and cannot be unmuted. Please submit your comments via mail to Amy Windham at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida 32720, or by phone at 386-943-5074, on the project website at www dot cflroads.com slash project slash 435209-1 or via email at amy.windham at dot.state.fl.us. Public participation at this hearing is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting the FDOT District 5 Title VI Coordinator, Jennifer Smith, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5367, or by emailing Jennifer dot smith2 at dot dot state dot fl dot us. You can also contact the FDOT Central Office Title VI Coordinator Jacqueline Paramore by mail 
at 605 Suwanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399, by phone at 850 414 4753, or by emailing jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. This public hearing was advertised consistent with the federal and state requirements shown on this slide. The environmental review, consultation, and other action required by applicable federal environmental laws for this project are being or have been carried out by the Florida Department of Transportation, FDOT, pursuant to Title 23 USC 327, and a memorandum of understanding dated December 14, 2016, and executed by the Federal Highway Administration and FDOT. FDOT is currently evaluating alternatives to provide a new interchange with I-75 between the existing I-75 US-27 interchange approximately two miles to the south and the existing I-75 State Road 326 interchange two miles to the north, located northwest of the city of Ocala. The new interchange will be located at Northwest 49th Street and will include the extension of Northwest 49th Street East to connect to the Marion County Northwest 35th Street extension project. The project development process consists of five steps, including long-range planning to identify the project need, project development and environment study, or PD&E, project design, right-of-way acquisition, and construction. The I-75 Project Development and Environment, or PD&E study, is in the second phase of the project development process, where an engineering and environmentally feasible alternative that meets a community's transportation need is determined. A pd &E study has three main components. An engineering component that entails the identification and analysis of potential design solutions. An environmental component that evaluates potential impacts to the natural, social, and physical environments and a public involvement component to inform and involve all interested parties in the development of the planned transportation project. This process is mandated by the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, and Florida law. The new interchange and extension of Northwest 49th Street supports the county's long range transportation plan, and it is among the county's top priority. The new interchange is needed to improve regional mobility within Marion County, accommodate future traffic growth, and provide congestion relief at the existing US-27 and State Road 326 interchanges. The new interchange also supports the county's vision for a new east-west corridor in this area of Marion County. This project will include the extension of Northwest 49th Street, Phase 2C, east from Northwest 44th Avenue to the north end of the Lime Rock Mine, and will connect to the Northwest 35th Street extension, or Phase 2B. The final design of Phase 2B is currently ongoing and will be constructed by Marion County. An interchange justification report, or IJR, analyzed the traffic anticipated to use the new interchange in the year 2045. Approximately 26,500 vehicles per day are expected to use the new interchange, with 21,500 vehicles per day expected to travel on the Northwest 49th Street extension. The IGR measures traffic efficiency in terms of level of service from A, which is the best, to F, with a target level of service for this interchange of C. The results indicate that the new interchange is anticipated to operate at an acceptable level of service. The pd &E study considered many potential solutions, including the no-build alternative, which would leave I-75 as it is today, 
and would not make any improvements to the roadway system. Several different interchange configurations were developed and evaluated, including a diamond interchange, a single point urban interchange, which combines all movements into a single intersection, a diverging diamond interchange, which crosses traffic over to the opposite side of the road, a partial cloverleaf with a loop ramp for the northbound off-ramp on the northeast quadrant, and a partial cloverleaf with a loop ramp for the eastbound northwest 49th Street to northbound I-75 on-ramp on the southeast quadrant. In order to determine the alternative that will most adequate, adequately meet the needs of the project, a comprehensive alternative evaluation was performed. Important Important considerations such as traffic service, right-of-way impacts and costs, as well as impacts to the social, physical, and natural environment were carefully considered. The results concluded that the Virgin Diamond Interchange will best meet the needs of the project. The preferred alternative, a Diverging Diamond Interchange, or DDI, provides a new connection to the, exist to the proposed Northwest 49th Street extension to and from northbound and southbound I-75. The DDI configuration is similar to a traditional diamond interchange. However, the two directions of traffic on Northwest 49th Street cross over or diverge to the opposite side at the on-off ramps as shown in the video. The main advantage of this configuration is that it eliminates left turns that cross in front of oncoming traffic, which increases safety. Left turns are made ahead of the DDI's two signalized intersections as shown in the video. This allows the movement of higher volumes of traffic, which reduces congestion. The preferred alternative also includes the extension of Northwest 49th Street from Northwest 44th Avenue to Marion County's future Northwest 35th Street extension. Northwest 49th Street will feature four 12-foot travel lanes with seven-foot bicycle lanes, a 28-foot raised median, six foot, and six-foot sidewalks. The proposed right-of-way for Northwest 49th Street is 122 feet. The preferred alternative was evaluated in terms of its impacts to the social, natural, and physical environments. No adverse effects are anticipated to protected species. No wetland impacts are anticipated. No noise impacts are anticipated. There are no anticipated impacts to potentially contaminated sites. There are no disproportionate impacts anticipated to minority communities. Mobility, access, and the local economy are anticipated to be enhanced. And no historic and ar archeological resources were identified. A draft categorical exclusion type two report, which summarizes the environmental impact associated with the preferred alternative was prepared and is available for review. The preferred alternative is anticipated to require 80 acres of right-of-way acquisition in order to implement the proposed improvements, as well as the potential for one business relocation and no residential relocation. The right-of-way acquisition cost is estimated to be approximately $45.7 million, and the construction cost for this project is estimated at $41 million. One of the unavoidable consequences of, on a project such as this is the necessary relocation of families or businesses. On this project, we anticipate the relocation of no families and one potential business. All right-of-way acquisition will be conducted in accordance with Florida Statute 339.09 and the Federal Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970, commonly known as the Uniform Act. If you are required to make any type of move as a result of a Department of Transportation project, 
you can expect to be treated in a fair and helpful manner and in compliance with the Uniform Relocation Assistance Act. If a move is required, you will be contacted by an appraiser who will inspect your property. We encourage you to be present during the inspection and provide information about the value of your property. You may also be eligible for relocation advisory services and payment benefits. If you are being moved and you are unsatisfied with the department's determination of your eligibility for payment or the amount of that payment, you may appeal that determination. You will be promptly furnished necessary forms and notified of the procedures to be followed in making that appeal. A special word of caution. If you move before you receive notification of the relocation benefits that you might be entitled to, your benefits may be jeopardized. Right away staff are present at the live meeting tonight, and if any virtual attendees wish to speak with right away staff, please contact Amy Windham. Draft documents for this public hearing are listed on this slide and were available for review starting October 28, 2020, and will remain on display until December 1, 2020 at the Ocala Public Library, the DeLand Public Library, and also on the study website for anyone who wishes to examine them. This pd &E study began in the summer of 2017. Since then, the team has performed the traffic analysis, developed and evaluated alternatives, and documented the findings. This project is anticipated to obtain location and design concept acceptance or approval by early 2021. This project is funded for final design, which commenced in the summer of 2020. We will now move into the formal comment period. Once again, if you happen to experience technical issues during the hearing, please type the issue in the questions pane on the control panel to report it, or please contact technical support at the contact shown on this slide. Staff will do their best to assist you. Your comments are important and will be incorporated into the decision-making process. You may provide your comment in several ways. For those who have dialed in with no computer access, you are in listen-only mode and cannot be unmuted. Please submit your comments to Amy Windham by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 501, the land Florida 32720 by phone at 386-943-5074 or by email at amy.windom at dot.state.fl.us. If you are attending online, you can type your comments and questions in the questions pane or request to make a verbal statement. You will be called upon and be unmuted in order to provide your comment. Please make sure to unmute yourself locally by clicking on the microphone button as shown on this slide. A green microphone is unmuted. If you are attending the hearing in person, you can complete the speaker request card to make an oral statement at the microphone or provide an oral statement to the court reporter present here tonight. Speaker cards are in the packet handed out to each attendee upon arrival. We'll, we will now begin the formal comment period with the in-person attendees first. I will now turn it over to Amy Windham. Um, keep your comments limited to three minutes. When you come to the podium, if you can state your name, your address, and if you represent any firm, agency, civic organization, government agency, or homeowners association. We ask that you state that as well. Um, we will now begin the formal comment period. And our first speaker is Suzanne Dilley. And our second speaker will be David Hoskins. So Suzanne, if you want to come forward, you have the microphone. everyone. I'm Suzanne Dilley. I'm from the Fountains uh, community. I am actually the HOA president. And I guess um, our question concerning this new interchange is it directly affects our community of, community of only 100 homes. 
However, it's always been a quiet community. When they did widen Northwest 44th and took all those trees down, the highway noise has become very loud. So a lot of times you're sitting on your back patio and it's like the semis are coming through your backyard. So with this interchange, I'm asking if this in fact goes through this whole process, what can we expect um, maybe from the state of putting a wall, barrier wall for the noise that is going to directly affect our quiet community? Yes, 4769 Northwest 46th Avenue. I did forget to mention that we'll, we, we will be responding to comments after the formal comment period. So uh, we want to get this as part of your public record. Um, and so Dave, David Hoskins, you are the next speaker. If you would state your address, name and address first. Thank you, Dave Hoskins. I live at 4525 Northwest 48th Lane. That is also in the fountains. Suzanne did bring up a good point as far as the noise. I'm also curious, are they planning on your, your picture here stops 44th Avenue? So with all that traffic exiting and off right there at 49th, are they planning on continuing a double lane all the way down to 326? So that way everybody doesn't funnel all the way southbound on 44th Avenue. Also impacting behind 49th Street, my house literally backs right up to 49th Street. How is that going to impact us as far as taking away from us? Granted, it is easement property, but the noise and everything else that is going to come as a result from that, you were talking about a four lane, you were talking about a six foot sidewalk. How is that going to affect us? There's vacant property on the other side of 49th Street on the north side of 49th Street. Can they not take away from that instead of impacting all of us that already have homes living there in, 40, uh, on, in the fountains? Those are my two questions I'd like to have addressed. Thank you. Is there anyone else in person who would like to speak at this time? We have another one. Okay. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker will be Mark Zapp. Mark, please state your name and address. Mark Zapp, 5041 Southeast 18th Street, Ocala. I'd like to thank DOT for everything they're doing, the hard work they put in. And, uh, the question I have is when you look at the interchange traveling from south to north on the east side, when your radius road comes around and ties into 35th Avenue, go up north to the mine, keep going with your hand. If you look at over 49th, we could do an, inter an intersection right there with future with a a tail that comes out north and a tail that comes out east for future development and future commerce to help growth of the county and the city. Um, that would be a great help to expedite business development in the area. Thank you. Do we have anyone else in person who would like to speak at this time? Sir, come on up, I'll grab you. And again, we'll respond to your comments at the end of the comment period. And we're gonna have Wayne King as our next speaker. Wayne? My name's Wayne King, I live at 5355 Northwest 49th Avenue. My questions are, it doesn't show how this is gonna extend on down right now. So when they do this four lane, 49th Avenue runs right into 49th Street. What are they proposing to do right there because of people that live down 49th Avenue coming onto a four lane highway now? Are they just gonna put a stop sign there? Are they gonna do a traffic light? Or are they gonna do something to keep us from having a lot of interference trying to get out on a four lane road, especially turning back east towards 44th Avenue? And also if they do take that on that other side, like this other gentleman was talking about on the north side, there's a tremendous amount of trees on there that were, a lot of them were planted there because they destroyed a lot of trees and they built most of 44th Avenue. The Tree Preservation Society made them replant all the trees and some that were taken down on 44th Avenue. And there's a lot of big, big old oak trees and stuff on that north side, plus all the trees that were planted because they destroyed them on 44th Avenue. So that's some of my questions. But I would like to know what they're gonna do there to keep us safe 
coming out of 44th Avenue onto 49th Street. I don't see anything about that yet, but that's my question. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, any other comments from our in, in attendance? All right, we're gonna move on to the virtual attendees for any comments that they may have. If you decide that you would like to comment, please just raise your hand with your comment card and we'll cycle back to you later. Okay, Gabby, if you've got virtual attendees who would like to speak. Thank you, Amy, we do. We have a couple. The first one up will be Lynn Miller. Uh, second up will be Jackson Hurst. Lynn Miller, if you can please unmute yourself. Um, I am not. I don't believe uh, Lynn Miller is no longer online. The next person up will be Jackson Hurst. Jackson, if you could please unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Jackson Hurst and I live at 4216 Cornell Crossing, Kennesaw, Georgia, 30144. And I have ridden on 75 going towards Orlando only once and I did notice that there is definitely a need for a new interchange between State Route 326 and US and um and US I can't think of it now, but um, uh, between State Route 326 and the city of Ocala, I especially love that the, that the Diverging Diamond Interchange is going to be the preferred alternative because DDI's improve safety by allowing traffic to cross over to the other side, thereby reducing conflict points, especially for left turning drivers and it also reduces the amount of left turn crashes as well. This interchange is desperately needed for the Ocala area. It will reduce traffic congestion and it will also bring increased economic opportunity to the north of Ocala. Thank you, Mr. Hurst. The next person up is Robert Yerkes. If you can please unmute yourself, Robert Yerkes. Mr. Robert Yerkes, if you could please unmute yourself. We have unmuted you on our end.
Um, okay, well, if Mr. Hurst does come back, just please um, let us know in the questions pane if you're having any technical issues. Amy, I don't believe we have anybody else online. Do you have anybody else um, who, who wishes to speak there in person? We do, we do have one more, one second. Okay. Raymond, please state your name um, and address. Uh, Raymond Ryle, 4730 Northwest 48th Avenue of Cala, Florida. My question is, is the timeline for the development and completion of this uh, interchange. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? Amy, uh, are we you have guys? no more speakers here. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Um, I believe we don't have any more speakers online either. So if there's no further comments, we will go ahead and close the formal comment period. Written responses to comments and questions will be provided after the end of the formal comment period for this hearing. The verbatim transcript of the hearing's oral proceedings together with all written and verbal material received at this public hearing to the FDOT office or through the project website will become a part of the public record for this hearing. Written or verbal comments submitted by December 1st, 2020 to be included in the public record for this hearing. Written responses to comments will be provided after the end of this official comment period. Again, the department invites your comments and questions, so please use one or more of the comment options that are shown on this screen. You can mail comments to Amy Windham, the FDOT project manager at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 501, Deland, Florida, 32720, or you can call her at 386-943-5074, or you can send a comment via the project website at cflroads.com slash project slash 435-201-209-1. And finally, or by email to amy at amy.windham at dot.state.fl.us. The hearing video link will also be posted on the project website. Virtual attendees, the questions pane will remain open for 15 minutes after the hearing ends for virtual attendees to provide any additional written comments. Outside the public comment period for the hearing, the department welcomes comments regarding the project at any time. Thank you all for attending the I-75 at Northwest 49th Street Interchange pd &E Study Public Hearing and for providing your input into this project. It is now 624 and I hereby officially close the public hearing for the I-75 at Northwest 49th Street Interchange pd &E Study, FM number 435-209-1. Thank you for joining us today and have a great evening. I really have to repeat it. No? Carlos, you um, you guys are back. Yeah, do, do you, Gabby, do you mind uh, uh, going over the the last slide again? This one. Yes, please. Okay, absolutely. The verbatim transcript of the hearing's oral proceedings together with all written and verbal material received at this public hearing to the FDOT office or through the project website will become part of the public record for this hearing. 
written or verbal comments submitted by December 1st, 2020 will be included in the public record for this hearing. Written responses to comments will be provided after the end of this official comment period. Again, the department invites your comments and questions, so please use one or more of the comment options shown on the screen. You can mail your comments to Amy Windham, the FDOT project manager at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, mail station 501, the land, Florida, 32720. You can call her at 386 943-5074. You can also send a comment via the project website at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 435-209-1 or email Amy at Amy Wind at Amy dot Windham at DOT dot state at FL dot US. The hearing video link will also be posted on the project website. For virtual attendees, the questions pane will remain open for 15 minutes after the hearing ends to provide any additional written comments. Outside the public comment period for this hearing, the department welcomes comments regarding the project at any time. Thank you again for attending the I-75 at Northwest 49th Street Interchange pd &E public hearing and providing your input into this project. So I now hereby close the hearing. It is officially 627. The hearing is officially closed for the I-75 at Northwest 49th Street Interchange pd &E study, FM number 435-209-1. Thank you again for joining us today.